Dear students and teaching fraternity, my greetings to all of you. Natarajan, you all know of late he is the most celebrated Indian cricketer. He has become the hot rub of many, especially in Tamil Nadu. Do you know why? It's because he has hailed from unpromising circumstances. Remember, the world always celebrates a person who comes from such humble background. Similarly, we have an extraordinary genius and a global icon who hailed from such unpromising circumstances and I have chosen to talk about him today. I'll give you some clues. Let me see how many of you can find him. He was neither a sportsman nor an actor, but a devout academician. He belonged to the early 20th century and did not have access to internet and not even good library. But surprisingly, his breakthroughs are a century ahead. His ideas surprised the accumulated wisdom of great mathematicians of 20th century like Professor Godfrey H. Hardy and Professor Littlewood Cambridge. Professor Hardy compared him to stalwarts like Euler and Jacobi and Professor Littlewood compared him to Sir Isaac Newton. You must have guessed by now he is none other than our very own Srinivasa Ramanujan. Dear students, we should be proud for he is an Indian hailing from Tamil Nadu. I am so excited in particular because he is the son of my soil and lived just a few hundred meters away from where I am now. On the auspicious occasion of his birthday, which is also the National Mathematics Day, I feel it's my honor to talk about him. His achievements are something remarkable. We all know that he was a self-taught mathematician who could not focus on other subjects and flunked out of college twice. And history says how later, with a great difficulty, he reached out to Professor Hardy of Cambridge. The initial communication was a bunch of handwritten copies which had three unbelievable formulas that was later popularly called as Roger Ramanujan continued refractions. Let alone Professor Hardy, none of us could have taken this seriously. But on seeing these formulas, Hardy was shaken. The finest mathematician of Cambridge said, These formulas have completely defeated me. I have never seen anything like this before. The association of Professor Hardy and Ramanujan was very unlikely as Ramanujan was a devout, destitute and subjugated Indian, whereas Professor Hardy was an English atheist. But their association led to the publication of Ramanujan's findings, which inspired the contemporary mathematicians, leading to Format's Last Theorem, Wheel's Conjecture, and Langman's Program. Apart from this, he came out with divergent series, uh, definite integrals, uh, elliptic functions, partitions, and number theories, or many among others. Ramanujan's works have formed the basis for cutting edge fields like superstring theory, multi dimensional physics black holes and quantum gravity. Especially Ramanujan's modular function is used for the study of time travel, anti-gravity, limitless free energy and much more. To be specific, Ramanujan's breakthroughs in integral calculus can be used to determine the aircraft's drag force buffeting the wings or the effect of gravity on man-made satellite. Let me tell you something interesting. The Wren Library at Trinity Cambridge has the finest collections in the world like the Epistles of St. Paul, Poems of Milton, Morgan's Bible and Newton's Principia Mathematica. Among them is Ramanujan's shabby notebook called The Last Notebook. It's considered as the treasure trove. Whether you believe it or not, it has answered some of the ancient mathematical mysteries. The beauty is that it has been compared to the Beethoven's 10th Symphony. In 2012, Professor Ken Ono, Emory University, Atlanta, Georgia, who has devoted his whole life for the study of Ramanujan, came out with a groundbreaking theory, studying a small paragraph from this notebook, which would help scientists to study black holes from a different perspective. Ken Ono, as many of us might know, is also the producer and the brain behind the Hollywood movie The Mad Holy of Infinity. I had an opportunity to meet him once at Sastra University, where I worked previously. 
He used to visit alternative years. He used to visit Sasra University. I happened to meet him there. Subsequently, I remember inviting him for a national mathematics day that I had organized when I was a principal at Chalapan Vidya Mandir International School, Karikudi. Though I communicated him only at the 11th hour, such a humble person he was, he mailed me back saying he could join us as he was in the middle of many other things. Now coming back to Ramanujan, he was offered a for us, fellow of Royal Society. It was a dream come true moment for Ramanujan and that didn't happen overnight. He had to undergo a lot of turbulences. He was not accustomed to the weather just because he was a vegetarian, he had to uh, starve initially. Professor Hardy later helped him to cook his own food. The saddest thing is, during the four years of his stay in Cambridge, he was forced to rework on things that had already been finished. Feeling completely demotivated, he even attempted to kill himself. Had he been recognized immediately, had he been allowed to work on his own, uh, he would have come out with many other path-breaking theories and still more, Many of his theories are yet to be understood and developed. Ramanujan has inspired many scientists. Michio Kaku, the most popular theoretical physicist, says, Srinivasa Ramanujan was the strangest man in all of mathematics, probably in the entire history of science. He has been compared to a busting supernova, illuminating the darkest, most profound corners of mathematics before being tragically struck down by tuberculosis at the age of 33. Working in total isolation from the main currents of his field, he was able to re-derive 100 years worth of Western mathematics on his own. The tragedy of his life is that much of his work was wasted rediscovering known mathematics. Once, Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, who was greatly inspired by Ramanujan, said, What if he had access to internet and good library? Dear students, let me tell you something. Apparently, all technology that would eventually help us to create portals, stargates, hyperdimensional access mechanisms, levitations, teleportations would need the applications of Ramanujan. Lastly, I have to remind you that I'm, an, I'm a teacher of English I've been to Ramanujan's house many times and I have read his letters to Professor Hari. So as a teacher of English, I'll insist you all on improving the communication skills because it was Ramanujan's impeccable English that helped him to communicate his ideas effectively and fight till he was understood. So like Ramanujan, in order to establish our identity globally, we need to master this common language goal. Being also a teacher educator, in a way, I'm forced to consider the credibility of our own education system that failed to recognize the genius of Ramanujan. I always say numbers are my force and certainly not anywhere near to being my friends. But still, I go crazy about Ramanujan because his life is simply a romance, a romance with the numbers and forms. Also, I think it's my duty to educate the students' community on the values and philosophies of Ramanujan because I'm sure India has a lot of untapped potential like Ramanujan and they can be inspired by his life. Finally, I conclude quoting Ramanujan. An equation for him had no meaning unless it expressed a thought of God. Long live Ramanujan and long live his legacy. Thank you for listening to me.